Obviously. All the outfits that I wore for all the special events were created by Lily Alfonso and I've made it a point that wherever I go, I carry a piece of my country with me. And uh, the theme that she used was Malawi. So most of the outfits have an element of either the Malawi flag and whatnot. But what I'm wearing inside, actually, is a piece of the house itself. I made this for Feather's wedding, and I wanted the house to be part of this. I've still got the house in my heart, and I wanted it to be here with me as I answered this question. And I think wearing this thing has actually made me answer the questions as truthfully as possible because I know the house is here. I can't it lie. tells you a lot about me. The reason why I chose to do the red hair was because I felt in my heart that I was walking out. And you know Malawi is flames. And I was always saying in the house, keep the fire burning. That's my motto, keep the fire burning. I'm walking out the house, I want to be remembered. Nobody in the history of Big Brother has done what they have done to my hair, especially someone my age. I'm 30 years old, who walks around with hair like this? You know, it's daring, but it keeps people talking. The reception in South Africa was absolutely amazing, and I'm, I'm loving it, but um, I think we'll tone it down a bit because I have to now start going job hunting. <laughs> so we'll tone it down a bit. <laughs> that you've said that uh, you felt like you'd be evicted after you were, uh, it was announced that you'd be nominated. Why do you think uh, you had that feeling that you'd be evicted uh, after seeing that Natasha survived for a couple of uh, uh, five uh, nominations? Why do you think that you were uh, sure that you'd be evicted? Did you think maybe you were competing? Um, I walked into the house. Day two, I already had feelings of, I want to go home. And my emotions went up and down, as uh, she put it. Not uh, a mental disorder of any sort, but I felt it in my heart that, you know what? I have lasted long. I've been here. I've never been nominated by any of the housemates. I've never been nominated. And the fact that I have been nominated means now that the game is on. People are seeing who's a threat. And it's okay. Just as they nominated me, I walked in and I nominated them. Now, when they tell you on the nomination night on a, a Monday, when they tell you that you're up for eviction, you've got a whole week to deal with that situation. You've got a whole week to prepare yourself. What I did was plan A and plan B. If I'm staying in the house, how am I going to step up the game so that these people don't nominate me again? If I'm going home, so how do I want to go out? If you follow the what led to my altercation with Sulu, I just had my uh, my low moment with another housemate the night before, and we had a diary, our diary sessions, and I requested that I go back into the diary room. Now, while we were waiting for that to happen, Sulu happened. In the morning when I woke up, I went outside. We had a task where we were staying up all night. I woke up and I went downstairs, and the first thing that I saw was an avatar that was created by Cleo, Sulu's housemate, and was given to Hakim. Now, we all know Cleo and Hakim are the big brother couple. I think the realest there is in there. Now, it was broken. It was broken to pieces and it was lying on its side. So I went to all the other avatars way and I found out that they had been broken and burnt. And I asked who did this, and someone said, Sulu burnt them because we had to stay up all night, it was feeling cold. I got really angry because for me, what, it wasn't about me, but it was about the fact that how can you not respect other people's property? Just because these two housemates are not in the house does not mean that you can do whatever you want to do with their property. He kept his avatar, he didn't burn it, he burned that everybody was else's. First time being nominated as well. There's a lot of emotion that goes behind that. We do flip on each other, but usually it's not about the issues we're arguing about. It's about deeper things. I took out my frustrations on him, he took out his frustrations on me. And I knew from that that Asia created uh, something here that's gonna go on and on and on. But he came to me, he was the bigger person, he apologized. 
and I also apologize to him. I know some of the things that I say to him were in the heat of the moment, I was very angry. But we apologize to one another. And if you see, towards the end, Sulu and I became very, very close. We were sick at food. But I know for a fact that even though we were that close, I knew all the while that he had nominated me, but it was okay. Because I knew that some of the things that I said to him warranted a nomination. So, okay. Okay. so what image fine. did I want to portray? Sure. I wanted to portray Fatima, the real Fatima. Not the Fatima you have seen hosting an event. Not the Fatima that you see wearing crazy clothes or whatever it is. I wanted to portray the real Fatima and that was my strategy. As for Natasha getting lost at OR Tambo, that uh, conversation is absolutely distorted. This is the conversation. Natasha go to OR Tambo and there was no one to meet her. She saw Street Smart. She found her way to where she was supposed to be. She never got lost. She was very brave. She took it on and she got to where she was supposed to be. I never say at any moment that Natasha got lost. I say Natasha made her way to where she was supposed to be. As for the be. people that I think will take it if Natasha doesn't take it. The first one is Ben, from but he Ethiopia. is very mature for his age. He's a very intelligent person. He doesn't take sides. He doesn't want people to paint him a certain way. Um, I would like to see him get far. If Natasha doesn't get it, I would like to see him get it. He's, uh, he's the one that's going to surprise all of us. And uh, I'm going to say that because also I hear there's uh, an unspoken agreement between these two countries that this time, because our Natasha is up, Ethiopia will vote for Natasha. And if ever BIP comes up and Natasha is not there, Malawi will vote for BIP, you know? And I think that's quite interesting. I don't know how true that is, but it's something that I just caught when I landed. Um, BIP. The other person is Bassi. Bassi is uh, a force to be reckoned with. He's in a world of his own. Uh, he's highly entertaining. Um, very, very entertaining. Very, uh, he knows how to work. He knows how to work the show as well. He will clean, he will cook, he will do whatever it takes. But above all, he is so, so entertaining. And being a young person who has been through so much in his life, I think if I were to say, apart from Natasha, if there's anyone that deserves to take it home, my money is on Bassi. So Natasha, Pimp, and Bassi. Those are the three that are. Let me stress the importance of Malawi voting. The reason why I walked out, I had a tie with Zambia. Zambia had more votes because people in that country participated, but we each had one country vote. I would like to urge Malawians to vote because when it comes down to it, if it's a country vote we're fighting for, everybody has a chance of winning one country vote based on the fact that they come from that country. So that creates a tie. The next step of calculating who has won is how many people have you know, it's, it's, the, it's the rest of Africa. Now, if the rest of Africa hasn't voted for you and you're still standing on the country vote, we now start counting individual votes. Just because I got my country vote doesn't mean that I had more votes. It's the number of people that vote. So for Natasha to stay in the game, she must be voted for, not only in her country, but also in other countries. 